Tonight on Let's Talk About Health, we ask the question, are long haul flights bad for blood circulation? Plus, when you have a large bruise and it stays there for a long time, does that mean your veins are clogged? And also the story of a young woman whose life was completely turned upside down when she suffered a stroke and had severe blood clotting. We'll talk about her on this episode of Let's, Let's talk, talk About, about Health. Health. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Let's Talk About Health. Now, Mike, I feel like you travel to the U.S. quite a bit. What's the longest flight you've ever been on, and do you ever worry about blood circulation? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it's really tough being a stowaway. I mean, uh. how, how else can I afford these trips? No, uh, honestly, 28 hours is the longest flight I've been on. That is long. Yeah, I flew 28 hours to go interview Whitney Houston for one hour and then get on a plane and fly right back. It's long. And, wow. And to answer your question, yes, I actually was worried about circulation at one point because uh, I had a broken leg and it was really swollen. So oh. I, I actually was worried about it. And that's why we can ask our doctor about it, our resident doctor here. We have Dr. Peter coming out. Let's go ahead and bring our guests out. And joining him, we've got Jermaine Tan and Chen C. Hey, guys. What's up, guys? Hello. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Oh, this is going to be an Peter. exciting episode. Nice to meet you. Good hey, to see Mike. you. Yeah. Let's talk about health. Oh, yeah, yes. talking about health. Are we not talking about anything? Else? No? <laughs> no, okay, no, just health. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, guys, are you worried about uh, you know taking these long flights? And before that, though, what yeah. was the longest flight mm. you guys have ever been on? Longest direct flight, which is 19 hours, Singapore yeah. to New York. Wow. Right. That is the longest flight. Wow. You, so you went direct to New York? Yes. Oh, what carrier did you take? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Can I not say? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one. <laughs> Jensi, what about you? Um, 13 hours. Nine. Have you done a long flight? I have done a 12, and that was oh. like mm. it's killing long. me already. Yes. Right. So, do you do you guys worry about? It? Do you think about you know the circulation in your I blood? I do actually. I, I I always take like a couple of painkillers when I go on. on what? Like, yeah, I'm really? like, to thin out the blood. Yeah, like for me, I just like painkiller sleep. Have you tried a glass of red wine? That's <laughs> <laughs> that might be the of solution course, for of it. Course, exactly. <laughs> actually, for me, I take some melatonin oh. on ah, board, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I just knock out. Right, but it stresses me out to know that I'm in that space. Yeah. And I can't move for that long. But do you ever get cramps in your legs, when, especially when you're on board yeah. a flight? I feel like I do. I get that. Pins and needles? Yeah. I feel that a lot. Yes. Is this a normal thing, Dr. Well, Peter? you know, for... Uh, is it this... You know, take a step back here. You know, especially on long flights, we don't actually recommend that you just park yourself in an awkward position, take a melatonin or whatnot, oh. and pass oh, out. No, wrong. Yeah, I mean, want, like, yeah, don't feel it, done. <laughs> right, because you're sort of locked in that awkward position. Mm. You know, especially when you fall asleep, you know, you may actually be compressing on your thigh veins. Oh, right? and causing uh, poor circulation. So you definitely don't want to do that for for long periods of time. As far as circulation is concerned, every four hours you should get up and walk about. Yeah, we're not meant to be on a You're seat. You're not supposed to be sitting hours. cramped, right. right? And you know, especially if you're having numbness mm -hmm. or some tingling, yes. those would actually be nerves that are getting compressed. Ooh. So when you feel that, you should actually get up. You have more reason to get up and walk about as opposed to taking so my painkillers. Painkillers. <laughs> yeah. try to, and yeah. hopefully yeah. go four away. hours, right? Yeah. Just right. nice, like. So up. what actually is happening there when when you get? Uh, those pins and needles. Yeah. Is that yeah, so pins and needles, you know, if you can get away, if it goes away after a bit of walking, mm -hmm. that's just your, maybe your arteries or your nerves getting pinched. Mm -hmm. But if you start having those at the end of a long flight, that's actually a problem with your circulation and your legs are getting more and more swollen. Mm. Oh. And the tissue are getting bulging and that's when you have the heaviness or itching or, or pain. Uh -huh. Right, so it's very important that if you are forced to sit still for a few hours, do some calf races. Yeah. Do some point up, you know, like okay. flexion. Like D does the massaging do anything or no? Massaging will also work as well. Okay. Right. So then taking a pill, would it be advisable to take a an aspirin? Depending on your risk factor, is especially if you have varicose veins or mm. history of blood clots in the legs. You know, mm. it might be advisable for you to take something to thin out your blood before you go on these plane rides. So okay, right. let's yeah. play a bit of a game. Yeah. True or false? Mike, right. I have our cards here. All right. Okay. And Jermaine and Chen Si, they have their cards. And we're gonna guess on okay. true or false, and Dr. Peter here will tell us whether we're right okay. or wrong. Okay, let's go. First question, Mike, let's go. Okay, veins without blood in them are colorless. True or false? Wow. I would say true. I would say false. Really? I don't no. think that's true. I think Dr. Veins... Peter? Yeah, so the blood vessels actually have no color to it. When, so we, it's think about, true? when we think about colors, we're actually thinking about the blood that's flowing through. Yeah, it, that's it, what it, makes it has it red. oxygen, yeah. it's more red. 
If with no oxygen, it tends to be more darker and more bluish. Okay, bluish. so the answer will be no. Okay. True. Next question, um, arteries near the heart are also veins. I did not listen to that. Uh, so I am arteries to the heart. Yeah, the you'd call them Actually, would you call them veins? Like True. are they like fat veins? Like yeah, veins. fat veins. Veins. I'll go fat veins. 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 I'm True. Go so is it yes or no? <laughs> so we describe vessels that are coming out of the heart as arteries and vessels that are going into the heart as veins. So as you know, there's so many art, there's so many vessels coming in and out of the heart. So depending on what you're talking about, it could be an artery, it could be a vein. Yes and no. So, so yes, yes and, and no. So it's like this. So, like so we're half right. Okay, half right. Half right. Half right. Half right. Half point for everyone. Okay. Cool. So when we get a bruise, it's a sign that the skin is damaged, mm. not the vein. Mm. Skin is damaged, not the vein. No, I don't think so. Man, we, well, I'm gonna <laughs> say false. false. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm go gonna say false, false as well. Right? Because I do copy off people. I, I think it's the vein. Okay, it's actually false. Yeah. So it's those tiny, tiny vessels called capillaries hey, that have right, been yeah. broken due to stress or, or trauma, and blood is leaking out of these capillaries. So it is uh, veins. Yeah, it's the vessels. You but knew capillaries that. are like very, 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 like, wrong, very wrong tiny. Symbol, you still yes, got it wrong. <laughs> okay. It's the wrong way. All right. Final statement. Yeah. If you have bulging veins, it means you're super fit. Super fit. No, false. No. But How sometimes, no, when you get a pump in the gym, you yeah. see like they go, whoa, oh. you know, and then they go. But whoa. I mean, are we talking super fit inside or outside? Because there's <laughs> oh. two different things, right? <laughs> like your muscles. Let's go super with super fit inside. False then. Oh. It is false. Yeah, you're not. Kind of. Definitely not. I'm gonna go false. I'm gonna go false. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna go false. This yeah, so the bulging veins, when you see them in the legs, actually, it's actually a sign of trouble. Trouble. Your circulation Unless you're a weightlifter, backwards. right? That's... Now, yeah, so, but if you notice this in the gym or people who are actually, you know, lifting a heavy weight, so you're, you're basically increasing the amount of blood that's going to either the arm or the leg, so more blood has to come back. Uh. So those veins are now bringing in more blood flow, so they, the veins could so that's then okay. bulge. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. But the other. If you see them, just somebody who's sitting or resting, I mean, you see veins are dilated or looking very torturous or looking like warm. Then those are those are actually abnormal. Same. Okay, so, so it's a false, false is correct. correct. Yes. False. Yeah. Okay. Ah. All righty. Not bad. I think we did okay. We did quite okay. I'm checking my veins. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like fine. Okay. Seems like we're okay. Yeah. yeah we're okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's good. Nobody's got huge ankles. No. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> All righty. So when we come back, we have the story of a woman who has deep vein thrombosis due to a stroke. More on that next. Welcome back, everybody. Now we have a story of a woman who suffered from a condition called deep vein thrombosis. Here's her story. I used to be a workaholic. The stress I gave myself and without exercising caused my blood pressure very high. That is the reason to cause the stroke. After this, I tell myself, so what if you earn a lot of money? You lie on the bed, you have no health. What's the point? I have two strokes within two years. Before my stroke, I was preparing for my exam. Then suddenly, I start to droop. I couldn't even sit properly. I keep slanting to one side. I couldn't even hold my handphone. I refused to go to the hospital because of my exam. Then the second day, I couldn't even sit straight. My husband said, no, let's go to the hospital. Don't drag. I delayed it for one day. Who knows, one day is changing my whole life. My left hand couldn't move already. The doctor tell me, Madam Teng, unfortunately, we got to tell you, you got a stroke. Because of my first stroke, I'm immobile for a long time. Now I couldn't even shower by myself. I can't walk to the toilet. My muscle become very weak after the stroke. After the second stroke, unfortunately, I have a blood clot from my belly button all the way to my knee. And that caused my leg to be swollen. My left leg was always in pain. 
the pain is like pricking on from my thigh to my leg. When he actually presented to the emergency room while she was recovering from her stroke, and so while over at the rehab center, what they noticed was that one of her leg would start getting more and more swollen. The doctors there identified this as high risk for a deep vein thrombosis. And our venous system has basically two layers, yeah? One system that's in the deep system, called deep system, and one called the superficial, which is closer to the skin. And the deep veins are the bigger ones that carries the majority of the blood flow back to the heart. So that's where her clot was happening, is in these larger uh, veins. And so very quickly, we did all the workup and identified that to be a very, uh, what we call proximal DVT, meaning that it's very close to the belly button and had a high chance of flying into the lungs. So in her situation, she had been immobile for quite some time. If we were to leave it alone, uh, what would happen is the leg would start to change color. So if her whole entire system, both the deep vein as well as the superficial vein system is cut off, then blood will stop flowing and she will risk losing the leg. Now, previously, we had to use surgical. We had to open up the vein and remove the clot. Recently, we have uh, introduced new technologies where we can go and basically pull the clot out. It only took us about 45 minutes to do the procedure. And for her, we, uh, we start noticing the leg shrink down. Within about two or three days, it was, it was basically the same size as the other leg. I go to stroke support station in short call S3 for my occupational therapy and my physiotherapy. Now I'm doing my hand therapy and my leg therapy. We bought a electrical stimulator called Sebo to activate my muscle and my wrist will raise up. Now at least I can stand for a short while. I can walk with my therapist. When you have the health, don't take it for granted. Before my stroke, my husband do exercises and he asked me to go. I tell him it's a no-no. But next time if I recover, I don't think he need to ask me. I'll follow voluntarily. Wow. wow. That's a powerful story. And uh, I mean, just your life changing in one day. Mm. And that's it. And so you mentioned in there proximal DVT. Yeah. yeah. What is that? So proximal is really about the location where, where the clot sits. Yeah. So your vein goes from foot all the way down, both sides, emerges right around where the belly button is, and then goes straight up to the heart. Below that belly button will be proximal, meaning closest to the heart as oh. opposed to further away from the heart. But why is it more dangerous? Yeah, so that's the thing. Beyond this point, that vein actually has no valves. So one of the things we didn't talk about are these valves that are inside the vein. Every few centimeters, there will be valves that closes and support that blood as it travels upwards. Are they two-way valves or do they have to be? One way, right? one way. Oh, one way. One way. So it just closes behind it so it doesn't fall. Okay. Uh -huh. It doesn't fall back onto the foot, right? It got to work against gravity. So uh, is the most common symptom swelling in the legs? Yeah, so most common it is swelling, some redness, some pain. And usually it's one-sided, so you, got, you are your own best comparator, right? Mm -hmm. right? So at the end of a trip, you can just say, hey, one leg is, looks slightly bigger than the other, and that's when you should be a bit more concerned. And uh, that would be, if, if you're noticing that for like an hour, two hours, then there's something going on, or? Yeah, so if you notice that, and you're not, when you lift up your leg, it's not really going away. Yeah. Then that's when you should be concerned, especially if you had just done some travels. Mm -hmm. So blood clots, are, are they normal? So, yeah, so our body uh, naturally have two systems. One is to make clots, and the other one is to break down clots. Oh. And they have to work together. Otherwise, if you trip and fall, mm. you cut yourself, oh. you wouldn't be able to stop bleeding. Mm -hmm. And the problem comes when clots are forming in abnormal places. So these deep veins are not supposed to have clots. Yeah. Yeah, so when that happens, that's when things go, uh, can go wrong very quickly. Uh, what do we have here? So uh, we have a demo here of um, some bubbles in the... In the bubbles! Oh, yeah, I, know. I got excited. For a second. So just imagine these are your <laughs> the straws as the veins of the leg, and they're full clots. So we're really looking at like that much clotting. I'm just picturing one yeah, of these, like one little clotting. bubble in there. But oh no, it's kind of like traffic. Oh, if there's an accident in there. the front, it just jams up. Got it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, this is like the PIE every day. <laughs> oh box, my gosh. Right? At 8 a.m. every day. <laughs> that is what it is. <laughs> so update. imagine this is your vein. So here, what we have is basically essentially is a tubing. It's very flexible at the tip. Yeah. And we just let it travel to where the clot is. And we turn on the machine and you're sucking out the clot. 
piece by piece, right? Oh, wow. Or segment by segment. And any time that this tubing becomes jammed, Mike, if you could, just push yep. forward the wire. Yep. Push. Okay. There's a little separator oh. that can actually break down, break down any clots that are trapped oh. inside the tubing. So that breaks down the clots first? Well, no, it actually, it, it basically tries to suck out the clots. It sucks it all out. Oh. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Now, the second one is where the like you said, mostly breaking down the clots. So in this tiny little catheter, uh, in the, there are two holes, right? Just like from the hole in the back, they'll spray out power, uh, powerful saline jets, jets okay. of fluid, and try to break down the clot or soften up the clot. How long does this whole procedure take for someone? Usually for less than an hour. Oh, we try to do all this okay. in less than an hour. You mentioned right. 45 minutes, right? Yeah. Then right. for her, so we yeah. used uh, this last device. I'm going to introduce you guys. Any of you guys like deep, um, deep sea fishing? fishing. fishing. I yeah. love yeah. fishing. Yeah. 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 So again, you know, you have a class somewhere, and you you basically park this device on top over it. Okay. Right. Through the valves. Through the oh. valves over the clots, and this is a coring element. So this thing will scrape the clots off the wall of the, of the vein, and so if showering, it has this neat little bag that collects the clots. So now we're able to just draw. Oh, wow. You're, just really you're fishing. crab fishing. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're catching all kinds of sea in the sea. Yeah, what it is. Clock fishing. <laughs> right. Individually, they all work pretty well. You know, we can get about 90, 95% of the time, we can get the clots out, mm. right? But there are times when the patients present a bit later, so the clots are not as fresh. Right. They're they, they, have, they, have, they have time to become more organized, they're more, more rubbery. So by the time you get any symptoms, it's it's probably pretty, pretty clotted, right? Yes. The way we diagnose is through ultrasound. Oh, okay. So somebody actually has to put a probe over that that vein, and uh, what we try to do is compress it because veins are, com uh, are collapsible or compressible. Yeah. So with enough force from the skin, the vein will flatten. Okay. But if there's a clot sitting in there, no matter how hard you try to press on it, it's it will not. not. Just yeah. like how you can never flatten this bubble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can try <laughs> by drinking it. So far, we don't really have a reliable way or some simpler way of sort of routinely screening for clots. Yeah. Right. Prevention is the best cure. So just generally exercise. Yeah, so you can it, also... It, it, yeah, also preventive. wearing compression stockings are also good. Compression oh. stockings. Compression stockings. About yeah. that, people wear it when they go to sleep. That's not good. Uh, that's it? actually, again, the wrong thing to do. Yeah. You should do it. You should wear your stockings during the day. Oh, yeah, because that's so not the that, whole night, but the whole day. Not the whole night, but the whole day, because that's. Remember now, we're talking about gravity, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Daytime is when you are either sitting or standing. Gravity right. is working against blood trying to go back to the heart. But if you're sleeping, you're horizontal, so the gravity pull is out yeah, of the yeah, equation. Yeah. So blood is able to go back to the heart very easily. All right, guys. Wow, we're learning so much here. This is great. And when we come back, we're going to learn more about varicose veins and how to prevent them. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, on today's episode of Let's Talk About Health, we're talking about our veins. Yes. Now we turn our attention to vein disease. Right, right, right. So I think we have a nice diagram to illustrate this. So as you can see here, DVT happens in the deep veins, right? And those are the bigger veins that's carrying 90% of the blood flow from, from the extremities, and that's in the muscular layer. But as you can see, it's actually connected uh, by these peripheral veins to the superficial veins. Right. And the superficial veins are the ones that are closer to the Skin. Are those the ones that you put the shot into or the, the IV into? Yeah, so those are okay. the ones that you're trying to find IVs into. So if the valves stop working, you can have blood flowing both upwards and downwards. And thus, those segments of the superficial veins become bulging, become tortuous, mm -hmm. and some people describe it as looking like cords or, oh. or like worms. And you'll, oh. see, you'll see them in, you know, inner thighs, back of the knee. No. Do you get it when you like cross your legs for very long periods of time? Because my mom happen. tells me like, don't cross your legs. Right. Cat, right. cat, don't cross your legs. It's <laughs> always like it's automatic. I can't, and I do it for long hours. It's yeah. bad for your veins, yeah, right? Yeah, so again, I, like oh. I explained earlier, veins are collapsible. <laughs> yeah. So when you're doing that, if you compress on the popliteal vein, which is the vein behind the knee, then the circulation from below will be having a harder time coming okay. back. Oh, so whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so I always go. feel like when I'm getting a foot massage and they're f massaging the top of my foot, I feel like you're, you're 
smashing my veins. It's what like my doing? veins gonna open up, <laughs> yeah. you know? Is that yeah. bad then? That's no, bad, that's right? Well, thing. Emma, you do have to go through those veins to get to the muscle Okay, but tissue. underneath, fine. Right. Because there's muscle that's protecting it. Right. But what about on top, like the hard part of my foot? I'm like, it doesn't even feel good when you massage the top <laughs> of my foot. <laughs> when you rupture the veins? Yeah. yeah, so I actually don't recommend if you have these varicose veins for, for masseuse to oh. press too or hard Or even if you don't, oh. don't, don't smash my veins. Yeah. Right. <laughs> No, but sometimes he was saying that, you know, if you if you squash the veins, it's, it's not a bad thing because unless you have clots, then you can't squash them, right? right? That's right. What you, yeah. But who here thinks that a massage on top of your foot is good? Raise your hand. I you, kind of like it. I oh, like yeah. it too. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> is it just you, Mike? I don't like massages on my bone. <laughs> my, my question, though, is yeah. right, with vein diseases, right? Yeah. Someone, someone like me, I'm 28 this year. Yeah. Do I have to be worried? Well, it depends on your family history. So oh. for a woman, um, you know, if your mother has it, your grandmother has it, then you are going to be a higher predisposition to it. Mm. Should Mike be worried? <laughs> <laughs> so there are actually different stages of this right. process. We call this venous insufficiency, right. meaning the veins are, are sort of malfunctioning. And there's different stages, and what you can see, observe on your own legs. Uh -huh. So oh. it can start out as very tiny, one to two millimeter wow. uh, uh, wow. bulges called spider veins. And then it becomes bigger and more obvious, or called varicose veins. Wow. And then you have swelling, it can lead to skin changes. And at times it gets bad enough, you have ulcers. What is varicose veins? Varicose veins are just a way of describing veins that have dilated, become bulges, become swelling tortuous. Veins. Swelling veins, yes. Mm. Right, mm. essentially. Yes. When I get very angry, I have a vein here that pops, <laughs> that pops oh, out. Yeah, yeah, should yeah. I, is, I've seen that vein. <laughs> Thank you. I call it Sally. Should uh, I be worried about her? That's blood pressure. Uh, okay, right. so Sally's not, got, that's you're not, probably using the forehead muscles. You're squeezing on the, the vein. Tension. That's yeah. why it's, right. it's bulging. It's stress. It's forcing Sally uh, out. Don't touch your... You don't no, have one. No, I know. I do right here. Oh, I yeah. Oh, what is that? Yeah. That's just normal physiology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you right. get rid of varicose veins? Yeah, so though, depending on which ones you have, we can actually inject foams or uh, a special type of liquid into the spider veins and, and to make the veins shrink. Right? Okay. And for varicose veins, if they're not too bad, same thing, we can go in there with putting laser or radio frequency ablation, some heating element right. or some glue. Basically, to, to take away those uh, dysfunctional veins. So, are skinny jeans good then? No, uh, no. So that's the one thing we haven't mentioned is for ladies, uh, high heels, and for anybody wearing uh, attires that are too tight. Right. Take, take I feel off personally your shoes? attacked. <laughs> <laughs> take it off. Because if you just take it off. It's too tight. Again, you are compressing on those on those veins. But it's like compression stockings. But right. they look cool. <laughs> but what? No. Because you could actually cut away the. The circulation. circulation. Oh. So the, the worry here is people wear skin. I think it was fashionable for a while. Jeans Still are just, is just too tight. Still. Why did yeah. they popular? <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Alrighty, we'd like to thank Dr. Peter for joining us today. And of course, our guests as well, Jermaine and Chinsi. It's been amazing. It as certainly usual. has. Thank you guys so much. Hope this was informative for you and you learned something, how to prevent and what to do, what to look out for. We will catch you next time on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, about Health. Health. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to catch our online series, We Need to Talk About This on MeWatch. Ptosis causes a medical condition. Is this cosmetic surgery or medical? That's a really yeah, what does it question. fall under? Does it, yeah, does it get if covered by insurance? Or, yeah, because yeah. if it's going to cause an impairment to your vision, right? It's Correct. medical, no?